Hello, I welcome to UPSC prelims Chaturya series of Shantalakshmi IAS Academy, where we will discuss the daily prelims MCQs from the Hindu, Indian Express and PIB. Let's begin. The first question, consider the following statements about free movement regime along the Indian-Myanmar border. The FMR was implemented as a part of India's Lukist policy to improve relations with Myanmar and promote trade and cultural exchange. It is a reflection of the physical, ethnic, linguistic, cultural and fraternal linkages among the trans-border villagers. Which of the statements given above is are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one or two. This was in news. Home Minister Amit Shah said, Free Movement Regime Agreement with Myanmar would be reconsidered to stop border residents from moving into each other's country without any paperwork. About free movement regime, under the FMR, all the hill tribes, whether they are citizens of India or Myanmar, can travel with 16 km on either side of the Indo-Myanmar border. They can cross the border by producing a border pass with a one-year validity issued by the competent authority and can stay up to two weeks, up, two weeks per visit. The FMR was implemented in 2018 as a part of the Central Government's Act East policy. FMR is implemented by both the governments for the people living along the Indian-Myanmar border. This helps locals to get more culturally assim assimilated with trans-border villages through weddings, celebrating common festivals together, and trans-border trade. It is a reflection of the physical, ethnic, linguistic, cultural, and fraternal linkages among the trans-border villages. Indo-Myanmar border, it runs for 1,643 km in the four states of Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland, and Arunachal Pradesh. It runs from the tri point with China in the north to the tri point with Bangladesh in the south. Assam Rifles is tasked with guarding the IMFB. So the answer is two only because it was implemented as a part of India's activist policy. Not the lookist policy. Moving to the next question. With reference to Bharat Ratna Award, consider the following statements. It, it is the highest civilian award of the country, which was instituted in the year 1954. The number of Bharat Ratna Award is restricted to a maximum of five in a particular year. This award is given to only those artists who had outstanding achievements in art, science, literature and public services. How many of the statements given above are correct? Only one, only two, all three, none of the above. Recently, Karpuri Thakur, a prominent Gandhian socialist leader and former Bihar chief minister will be awarded the Bharat Ratna posthumously. About Bharat Ratna, it is the highest civilian award of the country, which, is, which was instituted in the year 1954. The eligibility of this award, any, per, any person without distinction of race, occupation, position or sex is eligible for these awards. Though usually conferred on India born citizen, the Bharatatna has been awarded to one naturalized citizen, Mother Teresa, and two non-Indian citizens that, that, that were Pakistan national Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and the former South African President Nelson Mandela. And the original statute, the original statutes did not provide for the posthumous awards, but were amended in 1955 to permit them. Former Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri became the first individual to be honored for posthumously. It was awarded in recognition of exceptional services of the highest order in any field of human endeavor. The recommendation of the recommendations for Bharat Ratna are made by the Prime Minister himself to the President, and no formal recommendations for this are necessary. The number of annual awards is restricted to a maximum of three in a particular year. On, confer on confirmation of the award, the recipient receives a sanat that is nothing but certificate signed by the President and the medallion. The award does not carry any monetary grant. In terms of Article 18, Clause 1 of the Constitution, the award cannot be used as a prefix or suffix to the recipient's name. 
However, should an award winner consider it necessary, he or she may use the following expressions in their bio data, letterhead and visiting card, etc. to indicate that he or she is a recipient of the award. In the number of Bharat Ratna awards is restricted to a maximum of three in, in a particular year. The award is given to a exceptional performance in any field of human endeavor not the in the field of achievements in art, science, literature and public services. Moving to the next question. Choose the correct one with respect to Alexan Caesar management system. It is a dedicated technology platform designed and developed to digitize data for intercepted items directly from the field through a mobile app. Banks may generate QR code based receipt in PDF format and the issue for a legal cash transfer. It is a platform where all the state enforcement agencies will be on a border. How many of the statements given a boys are correct? Only one, only two, all three, none of the above. Recently, the Election Commission of India has conducted a training program in virtual mode on the recently introduced election season management system for the officers concerned from Andhra Pradesh. About this system, it is a dedicated technology platform designed and developed to digitize the data from intercepted items directly from the field through a mobile app. It also allows the banks to generate QR code based receipts for case of the moment. The main features of this system was automate desired report in required format for all stakeholders, dashboard analytics for received data from multiple agencies, Banks may generate QR coded base receipt in PDF format and issue for a legal cash transfer. In this platform, all the enforcement agencies such as a police, transportation authorities, central tax agencies and others share information in real time. The, the platform is for real time updates and seizures from the field. It is a system that ensures seamless coordination and intelligent sharing among these enforcement agencies. It is a platform where all the center and state enforcement agents will be onboarded. These agencies are required to upload details of every recorded movement and seizure of illicit cash, liquor, drugs, etc. So the answer is only two because it is a platform where all the state and center, center and state Enforcement agencies will be onboarded. Moving to the next question. Consider the following statements about Agula's long billed lark. It is a South American endemic species restricted to the Agulahas plains. As per IUCN status, it has a vulnerable species. Which of the statements given above is are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one or two. Agula's long billed lark is adapting and surviving despite farming, taking over their nesting grounds in South Africa. About Agula, Agula's long billed lark, it is a small pezzerine bird. It builds nest on the ground mainly in Reno star wild phinops, a type of vegetation filled with grasses and wild spring flowers. It is a South African endemic species restricted to the Agula's plain. These are generally little brown birds that are often difficult to identify. These larks prefer to nest in Renostar wild. The habitat of this Agulla's long bill lark, it appears to have adapted quite well to its modified habitats like farmlands, although its distribution is patchy for unknown reasons. The, dis the distribution of these, it, its restricted range is centered on the Agulla arable farmland from east of Otento, Otentos, from east of the Otentos, Holland mountain range to the Moselle Bay. The conservation status of these IUCN near threatened threats, land use changes or any freak occurrence could be determined to the whole species and to other species that defended on this vegetation. So the answer is D, neither one or two. It is a South African, South African endemic species 
as per IUCN, as per IUCN status, it is a threatened species, not vulnerable species. Moving to the next question, consider the following statements regarding Lake Retba. It is located north of the Capwat Peninsula of Senegal, northeast of the Dakar. It is also known as Lacro, that is nothing but pink lake. The pink color, the pink coloration is due to the proliferation of halophilic green algae and Dunalia salinin, which contain red pigments. How many of the statements given above is are correct? Only one, only two, all three, none of the above. The lake red pass water are virtually devoid of life on the verge of disappearing due to pollution and mining. About Lake Redba, it also known as Lac Rose, that is nothing but Pink Lake. The location of this lake, it is located north of Cap Watta Peninsula of Senegal, northeast of Dakar. The lake is isolated from the sea by sand dunes. Its fresh water comes from the seasonal water table in the dunes, which are higher than the lake. Thus, the sea provides most of the lake's water and all of its salt. The Pink Lake is one of the main tourist destinations in the Dhaka region, primarily because of the pink color of its waters. Why it is pink? The pink coloration is due to the fluorification of halophilic green algae that is nothing but living in a salty environment, Dunaliella salina, which contain red pigments. The algae is associated with halophilic bacteria of the genus Halobacterium. This microscopic algae resistance to salt comes from its high concentration of cartonide pigments which protect it from light and its high glycerol content. In, in fact, Donalina salina contains at least four antioxidant pigments that is that are beta carotene, astaxanthin, luatin and zixanthin which are rich in vitamins and trace elements. When salinity is high, algae with red pigments thrive and when salinity is low, they give way of other algae rich in green pigments. So the answer is all three. Thank you. This is the today's session.